Well, good afternoon. And welcome to the celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It's here that we gather as a community of believers to worship God and to hear his word and to be nourished by his body, his blood, his soul, and his divinity. And so I thank you all for being here. We're fast approaching the end of the liturgical year. Next week, we celebrate the solemnity of Jesus Christ as the King of the universe. After that, we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. And the first Sunday of Advent, Advent, as far as the liturgical year is concerned, is New Year's Day. So as we approach the end of the year, the church in her wisdom calls us to sort of reflect on the end of the world and what that means in our present time. Hearing these readings today can be a bit unsettling. And I remember one day as a small boy, I was about five years old, and I went to bed, I fell asleep, I had this dream, and there were fires and smoke, there were dinosaurs and dragons, there were lions and tigers and bears, And there were these big rats with big teeth. And those furry spiders, they were crawling up and down my leg. I was so scared. I thought, sure, the world was about to end. And suddenly, I just woke up, and I sat up straight. My eyes were wide open. And there, sitting on the edge of my bed, was my mother. I don't know how she knew. But she just reached her arms out, and she grabbed me, and she pulled me close to her. And my pounding heart started to calm down. Today, there are pundits and politicians, there are scientists, who will inevitably declare that the world is going to end in 12 years because of climate change. Well, I'm not here to debate climate change or refute or defend any of the statements that have been made. But I do want to highlight the impact that it's had on our young people. In 2021, a group of six universities got together and conducted a survey of 10,000 people between the ages of 16 and 25 from all over the world. And what this survey revealed is that 56% agree with the statement that humanity is doomed. 75% believe that the future is absolutely terrifying. In recent years, young people have had the experience of going through the pandemic as we all have. But it's had a tremendous impact on their lives. It's affected the way that they interact with each other. It's altered the way that they grasp educational concepts because of virtual learning. And it's had a great effect on the way that they engage in the joys and the challenges of life. Life has a way of throwing curveballs. In history, there's been wars and famines and natural disasters. There's been crime. There's been sudden deaths. There's been all sorts of things that heighten our anxiety and add to our stress. But you know what? Through all of that, we've always had our faith, our Catholic faith, to lead us, to guide us, and to offer some semblance of perspective. So many of our young people today are leaving the church. And when they leave the church, most of them have no religion at all. They're the fastest growing segment when they're polled about your religious beliefs. These young people don't know about the mercy and the love of Almighty God. They haven't grasped the concept that they, like us, are loved by God eternally and they are adopted sons and daughters of Almighty God. In a word, their worldview is one that is based on hopelessness, and fear. Some even have a sense of of panic and futility. 
And then, so often we hear our young people who have walked away from the faith come back and say, you know what? I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. As though being associated with a religion is some sort of a horrible thing. What I find interesting about this is that they're not interchangeable parts. You see, our spirituality is something that are, we're built into innately. All of us are created as composite beings. We have mind, we have body, we have spirit. And we have all of those from the moment of conception. Even the most hardened atheist, even if he doesn't acknowledge it, is spiritual. Religion, on the other hand, is the way we direct and order our spirituality towards truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that Jesus comes to us in truth and in word and in sacrament. What's a parent to do when their child walks away from the faith? What do they do? How do they deal with that? Well, I want to begin by saying that we all need to get down on our knees and pray. Our young people desperately need our prayers. Remember that it was St. Monica that prayed for 17 years for the conversion of her son, St. Augustine, that when he was finally converted, he became one of the greatest theologians in the history, not only of the church, but in the history of mankind. We need to pray that the Lord God sends his spirit to fill us with wisdom so that you and I could be a beacon of faith and hope and love to everyone we encounter, especially our young people. The second thing we need to do is see what God has to say about it. And how do we do that? We go to sacred scripture. What does God have to say to us about our children when our children walk away? Well, let's begin with the story of the prodigal son. Most of us are familiar with the story, but let me just recap it just a little bit. So in the first place, the second oldest son goes to the father and he demands his inheritance. Why? Because he wants to reject everything that the father stood for and go live a life of debauchery. What does the father do? The father gives him his inheritance and says, go. Think about it. The father did all he could. He raised his sons. He shared his values with his sons. He told him to be a God-fearing man. He told him to love his neighbor and to, and to love God. The son made his own choice. And somehow, some way, we have to acknowledge the fact that we need to be humble enough to realize that it may not be you and me that's going to save that child. It might be an experience. It might be another person. The second story has to do with the rich young man. And I suspect this rich young man was about the same age as those people that were polled in that survey, somewhere between 16 and 25. And he walks up to our Lord and he says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, keep the commandments. He says, I've been doing that since my youth. Good. One more thing. Sell everything you've got Give it to the poor and come and follow me. The rich young man wasn't ready for that. Jesus looked at him with love and the rich young man turned away, put his head down, and in sadness he walked away. I often think about this, this parable and I think, you know, like Paul Harvey used to say, I'd love to know the rest of the story. Is it possible that somewhere along the line, he had a conversion, a realization that this call to Jesus is something that will provide him with so much more riches than he's got, that it's beyond the pale. Is that possible? Yeah. With God, all things are possible. 
The next one, the story of the Good Shepherd. Jesus promises to leave the 99 and go and find the one that is lost. Think about that. He desperately, desperately loves the child that has walked away. One thing to keep in mind is that as much as we love our children, as much as we want to give them everything that we have and more, it doesn't even compare, it doesn't even come close to how much Jesus loves them. Trust him. And the last one we're going to talk about is John 3.16. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. To do what? He became an embryo. He became a fetus. He became a baby. He became a child. He became a teenager. He became a young adult. And he did that because of the Father's love. He came to teach us to pray with us. He came to stand at the foot of Golgotha, be handed his cross, and walk up to the top of the hill to be nailed to the cross for your salvation, for my salvation, and for the salvation of all those who have walked away. So many years ago, probably more than I really care to admit, my dear mother placed her arms around me pulled me close, and she said, it's okay, honey, you just had a bad dream. Sometimes I think our young people aren't having a bad dream, they're having a bit of a nightmare. And just as my mother wrapped her arms around me, may our mother Mary wrap her mantle around each one of these children, each one of these children that are confused, are in doubt. And may she intercede for us, that she brings them faith in their doubt, hope in their despair, and light in their darkness. And may our Mother Mary lead every one of us closer to her beloved Son. Amen.